Joining us tonight in the MC Continental Prime to discuss insecurity in Nigeria is Femi Aratokun Ale, a security consultant. Hello, Femi, and thank you very much for joining us. Hi, good evening. Thanks for having me as well. Now, moments before President Buhari's uh, visit to Meiduguri, suspected terrorists launched bomb attacks and killed, that killed uh, several people. What's your thought on the timing of the incident? Um, you see, um, the, the situation in Borno State has always been very hostile and very chaotic, which we all know all over the world and the region themselves, they know it. The president of the country is actually aware of the hostile situation in the country. But however, we're not going to blame the head of state for going around to visit any of the states, which is actually, you know, heading at the moment right now because he needs to show that, yes, I've got the grip, I've got the power, and I've got to move around freely as the number one citizen to visit any situation or any state, as so far the Constitution says that. But my problem with um, the situation is the timing, and um, what they ought to have been able to do is go in covertly rather than, you know, making a very big announcement about the whole thing because we all know that all these criminals will want to take advantage and they want to you know make a statement by you know um violence ways you know that yes we are still in control or we are in power or we can attack and do and undo so that's exactly what we've seen at the moment right now in Borno state i mean this is not peculiar to Borno state we know that insecurity is all across the country what are some of the security gaps that you see in the architecture that makes it up? Uh, well, um, you see, the, I think um, right now the Nigerian security system needs to change the Nigerian um, architectural security program, which um, is going a bit rather too late, or they're not really looking into what are the best way to approach it, which I believe the, the number one thing is uh, they need to look for a way to standardize uh, the training part of you know how security is being enrolled out in Nigeria today that we're not seeing. Then again, the logistics seems to be very wrong, and we're not putting so much into encouraging the security personnel that we have in Nigeria into the real workforce mode of what they should do and what they should not do. I think we are losing the balance of the standard, and we need to put the standard right. This is one of the key things I'm seeing. I'm not probably blaming anyone because I'm equally part of it because I'm, I do come around to Nigeria to deliver training programs to both the police, the civil defense, and private individuals as well. So we all need to sit down together, and the, the government should at least, you know, look for other ways, think outside the box, that what else can we do? Do we need to go with this way, or we need to call the outsiders who are Nigerians in diaspora that might probably have one or two ideas into what to do to come in and inject their own ideas and see how it's going to work? Um, you, you seem to think that uh, there are things wrong with our security architecture. So, how would you rate the efforts by the army so far? And the, let's just say the security um, network in this country in trying to manage the situation? You see, if I'm to score the Nigerian military, I'm going to score them very high because um, this is, a, this is a, a very more like a guerrilla war they've been fighting for so many years now, and it's still, it seems to be unending. So I'm not going to score them low. However, how can we interwork with the Nigerian army? How can we interwork with the police? How can other security agencies work alongside with them and make sure that, you know, this so-called insecurity in the country is contained. We're not saying terrorism is going to go or, um, you know, get disappeared within one minute. But what we are saying it is how can we contain it? So it is not just only the military. It is the general effort of everyone. So with the military, I'm going to score them very good. They're trying their best. It is not easy because the trauma after each time they um, come back from any of the conflict zone is equally you know, very great that we're not looking at at the moment. Uh, let's look at a particular aspect, insurgency. Uh, some days ago, some northern groups came up to express their concern over the rising uh, case of insurgency in the country. What more do you think the government can do to attack this problem headlong, to give Nigerians a sense of something is being done, really, and not just mere words? 
Um, thank you for that question. Let us put it this way. We all have our rights to protest if we see anything not going right. So what the Northern Group seems to be doing, they are actually you know, within their civil rights. However, how do we manage conflict is another case that the security agencies or the military or the police seems not to get right. You don't use violence for violence. These guys are actually crying for their rights that they want to be protected and they are not getting the right protection from the government. So they have the right to protect, but not because they are protecting, we should now start using violence against them. That is completely wrong. And it seems, you know, we're actually trampled on their human rights, which is not fair. So I think the government should look into what is the best approach. The best approach is, you know, having more like, you know, community engagement to let them see how far they've gone, what they are doing, or maybe set a KPI so that the community can equally get involved in giving them advice or supporting them in one way or the other in terms of intelligence gathering. Those are the kind of things we want to see so that we can have a proper engagement between the community and the civil um, security architecture we have in Nigeria today. I'd just like to ask you this before we let you go. President Buhari's tenure is coming to an end. 2023 is just around the corner. How do you think um, posterity will remember him if he is unable to, um, say, maybe put a um, considerable amount of pressure on insecurity and make it abate a bit before his time is over? Uh, well, it's going to be in two ways. Um, some people will score him high, some will score him low, but um, in my own opinion, the legacy he's going to leave behind will definitely tell if he's been the right president, if he's ruled us in the right direction or not. But do not let us forget, it is not just going to be only President Muhammad Buhari, it is going to be the entire cabinet. What exactly have they been able to do? What effort? How have they been able to support and encourage him to probably tackle some key issues heads on? Has he done it the right way? Has he done it the wrong way? The answer is left for Nigerians, you know, to, to be the job to answer themselves. But in my own opinion, he's done his best. Let's give him the kudos. Let's give him the credit. And let us hope that the next person that will be coming in will be able to fill the mantle and, you know, do the right thing at the right time. Thank you very much, Mr. Femi Aratokunwale, a security consultant. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.